If you think about a proton, you know, it's a, a particle, and you may not already know, but the proton is itself is made of three smaller particles that we call quarks. Don't worry about the name quarks. That is a long, long, long story. Basically, the guy, Murray Gell-Mann, who figured out that a thing might quark, like quarks might exist, thought it would be a cool name, and he was the first person to think of it, so it stuck, but that's a whole different story. But the proton is made of three quarks, but that's not quite the entire story. Or it, more accurately, that's not like the best way to describe the story. We're used to thinking of the proton first because, you know, we discovered the proton first and then we discovered it's made of smaller things. But really, I don't want you to think of a proton as being a bag of three quarks, the bag of three smaller particles called quarks, because that's not quite accurate. Instead, I want you to think of quarks as their own thing, which they are, they're their own particles, and triplets of quarks naturally form together. Just the way things work out, which I'm about to get into, quarks tend to form triplets. And it's the when quarks form a triplet, we give that a name, and that name is a proton. So... It's not like three quarks get together and then you now have a bigger thing called a proton. No, it's a proton is what we call, it's the designation, it's the name for three quarks glued together. And the way I like to think about this analogy is ridiculous, but the way I like to think about it is like the three musketeers, right? You have a whole bunch of musketeers and musketeers apparently like to form triplets. They like to run around in groups of three. And so you have your three individual musketeers, but when they're together, they work as a team. There's a single unit called the three musketeers that's made up of these three individuals. But once you have those three individuals together, fighting together with their swords out and, you know, doing all the musketeery things, it acquires a new identity. It acquires this, this new entity that we call the singular unit of the three musketeers. So that's what I want you to think of as a proton, is three quarks hanging out together, having adventures, and we give that triplet of quarks a brand new name. We call it the proton. Now, what glues together these quarks? Well, this is a very interesting question because for a long time we didn't know. And when you poke, when you crack open a proton, you try to figure out what's inside of a proton, you find the three quarks. Uh, but the three quarks, and there are six different kinds of quarks, just for whatever reason, because nature, there are six different kinds of quarks and they have cool names. It's uh, up, down, top, bottom, strange, and charms. It's just the six labels we give to the six different kinds of quarks. But when you crack open a proton, you don't find three different kinds of quarks. Instead, you find an up quark, a down quark, and another up quark. Now, when this was first realized back in the 60s and 70s, this was very, very confusing because normally, if all you know about is, say, gravity and electromagnetism, if, if that's all the forces of nature that you know, then you would look at this situation with two up quarks and a down quark bundled together and you'd say, this is impossible. Because the two up quarks will have the exact same electric charge, so they should repulse. I mean, they're the exact same particles, so they should hate each other, and they should immediately fly away. And you can't have two particles in the exact same quantum mechanical state. Basically, you can't have two of the exact... It's just a fundamental rule of quantum mechanics that you can't have two particles together inside of a proton. That's just not allowed. That's just not allowed. They, they can't be exactly identical. So to solve this issue of how the heck are three quarks bound together, despite the fact that two of them are the same and should not coexist, and even if they could coexist, they would just simply hate each other and repel each other, what's, what's keeping them together? 
What's keeping them together? The answer is the strong nuclear force. A new force of nature, I propose a hypothesis that there is a new force of nature involved that is able to bind together quarks despite their natural hatred for each other. Now, I'm not saying the musketeers naturally hate each other and it's only their common enemy that unites them, but if you want to go with that analogy, I'm not going to stop you. And the strong nuclear force actually goes by a better name. I know it's normally called the strong nuclear force, and I just said strong nuclear force. It has a better name, a more accurate name. The more accurate name for the strong nuclear force is what we call the color force. The color force. The reason for this is that if you have these two up quarks sitting next to each other in a proton, they can't have the exact same state. They can't be exactly the same. They can't have the same spin and the same electric charge. But they do. They do have the exact same spin. They do have the exact same mass. They have the exact same electric charge. Something has to be different about these two up quarks. You have to be able to tell them apart. And the, the, the device that we came up with to tell these quarks apart, these two up quarks, is that they have different colors. So one up quark might be, say, red. You know, it, it's just a label. It's just a label, but it turns out to be have some handy analogies. So one quark will be red, and the other will be, say, blue. And then that remaining down quark, the third of the triple, that one will be green. So now they are a little bit different, right? Because one's red and one's blue, and so they can coexist simultaneously. And even though they have the exact same charge and they would repel each other, there is now a new force of nature, the strong force, or the color force, that sees that color. It sees, oh, oh there's a red particle. Ooh, and there's a blue particle. I'm going to bring them together. I don't care what they are. I don't care if they have the same electric charge. I don't have to care if they have the same mass. I don't care if they like each other or not. It says, I see a color over here. I see a color over here. And I'm going to bring them together. The color force binds particles with different colors together. And the quarks have different colors. And so that is what is doing the work of binding a proton together. It is that color force. It is the interaction between this new property. Remember, this was all hypothesized in the 60s and 70s of just like, wow, we got some quarks laying around. They obviously have to be different somehow. We need new labels to signify, measure how different they are. We're going to use this device called color. It's not actually color. You don't can't actually see quarks. It's just a label. It's just a label. And you say, okay, now we got a red one, a green one, and a blue one. So those two up quarks can be totally are different because they have different colors. And there's going to be a new force of nature. Just like the electromagnetic force binds together particles with electric charge. Like if you have an electric charge, you feel the electromagnetic force. If you have a color you feel the color force and the color force brings everything together. That is what forms the three musketeers. That is what binds them together. The color force is what makes the three musketeers the three musketeers instead of just three individual musketeers. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like and share it and subscribe and all that good stuff. And please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter so that you can help me keep make these videos happen. And hey, I wrote a book. It's in bookstores nationwide, your place in the universe. You can buy this book, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, all the rest. Go to pmsutter.com slash book.